In this video, we are going to revisit the problem that we looked at previously, but we are going to solve the problem using the streamlined formulas for section properties for a timber beam. Now remember that this is for allowable stress design. It's for a beam with a simply supported boundary condition and also for a uniform load on it. We have the given information over here on the left. We have a dead load of 100 pounds per lineal foot. We have a roof live load of 120 pounds per lineal foot. We're going to assume dug for number one, which is common for structural engineers to do. We also have a deflection criteria of L over 240. We have also made the assumption that this is not a repetitive member and hence we will not be using the C sub R factor. We also have here that we are providing continuous lateral support of the compression edge of the beam. This is often done by plywood on a roof or a floor or by some other sort of flooring material. Uh, we also have that the beam weight is already included in the dead load and we are making that assumption as well. Let's uh, reduce the size a little bit here and uh, of course we want to uh, keep in mind this figure and the span of 10 feet and we first in our solution need to find the total distributed load according to the ASD load combinations. Since the only loads we have been provided are dead and roof live we are left with the particular ASD load combination that includes just those two items. That would be the worst case in this situation since we do not have any other loads given to us in this particular problem statement. In real life problems, the engineer would need to consider all other, uh, all other load cases that might occur as well if it appears that they may cause a more severe condition. In this case, we have 100 for dead load and 120 for roof live load. We get a total load for W of 220 pounds per lineal foot. Now we are going to apply the equations that we derived in the previous video. First off, if we want to find the required cross-sectional area for the beam, so that it satisfies the ASD requirements for a safe design, we can use this formula, 0.75 times W, which is 220 pounds per lineal foot, times L, which is 10 feet, and we have FV, which is 180 PSI. That is a table value from the NDS supplement for Doug Fur number one. And if we look at that here on this page, we can see that for Doug Fur number one down here at the bottom, we have FV of 180. And so we got that from this table for two by and four by type sawn lumber. Going back to our problem, we also see that there is a duration factor. If we went to the NDS code book, we would see in the table that for shear, uh, most often the only adjustment factor we need to worry about for shear is the duration factor. Since this is a roof live load, our duration factor is 1.25. Doing this calculation, we get a required area of 7.33 square inches. Next, if we assume that we are using a four by six, which is simply a guess, however, this guess is made uh, by looking at, honestly, the problem we did in a prior video, we can see if indeed the 4x6 works. We need to calculate the required section modulus here. It's 1.5 times WL squared over FB prime, which is this uh, bottom uh, quantity that's described here. Uh, for our W, we have 220 again, we have L of 10, we have 1,000 for F sub B, and then it's multiplied by adjustment factors. The 1,000 is again uh, uh, found by looking at the supplement 
table values for a Douglas fir number one, we have 1,000 PSI for F sub B, the bending stress. Coming back to our problem, we have again the duration factor of 1.25, and then we also have the size factor for a 4 by 6. We would find that by going back to our supplement and looking at the size factor table. If we note here that we have a grade of Doug fir number one, we have a depth of six inches, a width of four inches, and we are considering bending. We have 1.3 for C sub F. Returning now to our problem, we see that if we do this calculation with all those values included, we get 20.3 inches cubed. Lastly, to consider uh, the moment of inertia that's required, so we satisfy the L over 240 deflection criteria, we have the formula here, 450 W L cubed over E prime. So we have 220 for W, 10 for L in feet, and we can go back to our NDS and look at the uh, modulus for a Doug fir number one, and we see here 1.7 times 10 to the 6 for E. That is, um, does not have any adjustments. Notice the C sub D factor is not applied to E. And so uh, since uh, all the other factors that might be applied to E are not required in this problem, E turns out to be equal to E prime. And so we have 1.7 times 10 to the 6 here. We get an I required after doing the calculation of 58.2 inches to the fourth. Now, if we go to uh, the NDS supplement and we look up the um, section properties for a four by six, we can see them right here in this line. 19.25 uh, for area, 17.65 for section modulus, and 48.53 for moment of inertia. We write those values in here, and we compare them to what was required by our former calculations. We see that the area for a 4 by 6 is greater than what's required. That would be okay. If we look at the provided section modulus of 17.65 uh, for a 4 by 6 it is less than what's required. That is not acceptable. And so that alone would indicate that this beam is not going to be adequate. We also can look at the moment of inertia and again 48.53 which is the provided moment of inertia is less than what was required. So we can conclude that we need a bigger beam. So we might try a four by eight. Now, if we're gonna try a four by eight, all of these formulas are going to stay, stay the same and the results are gonna stay the same, except we do need to check this size factor because that could change the required section modulus. Let's go look at C sub F and see whether or not we would need to recalculate this required value. So we'd have to go back to the supplement and we would go to the uh, size factor table uh, at the bottom of the page here. And we look at a four by eight now, so it's eight inch deep, four inch uh, in thickness. And we see in this particular case, the C sub F factor has not changed and hence we can go right back to our problem. And none of these values in this case are going to change, but always be mindful that this size factor could change when you uh, may have to adjust and try another beam. If we went and looked in the section properties table in the supplement, we would find these values listed here. Again, our area is greater than what's required. Our section modulus for the four by eight is greater than what's required, and lastly, our moment of inertia is greater than what is required. And therefore, a four by eight Douglas fir number one beam is adequate. 
C sub F did not change between a 4x6 and a 4x8. This is not always the case when trying a new beam. C sub F may change sometimes and S require would, would need to be recalculated. I hope that this is a helpful example for you seeing uh, actual numbers plugged into the formula. I also hope that you recognize the value of having these formulas created ahead of time for us. Since a simply supported beam with a uniform load is so common, it is very quick to just plug in the information and then compare these required values to various beams that are in the section properties table. And a person can uh, uh, satisfy these three conditions simultaneously and pick an appropriate beam. Thank you for listening. And that concludes this particular video.